the uncertainty of when the budget will pass. This bill will take the guesswork out of our public education system. In the coming days and weeks, we will hear from school administrators, members of boards of education, from parents and from teachers and other stakeholders. And what we'll hear is a consistent message that it's important that we take the guessing game out of funding education. It's a no-win proposition when we leave our school districts guessing as to what their funding level will be. As was mentioned by Representative Seaton, what often happens and what has happened in the last several years is school districts are forced to lay off teachers, give them pink slips, because they don't know what the funding level will be for the coming school year. This cause, causes stress, added costs, and it's needless. It's needless because we in this legislature all agree on the importance of funding education. There's no question that we are bound by the Constitution and we are bound by a common commitment that education is a priority. So why have we let the decision be held off to the very end game, keeping everybody um, guessing as to what's actually going to happen when we all know that it's our responsibility to fund education. So yeah, it's a needed bill. I'm proud to be a supporter of it, and I think it's a good step forward uh, for this legislature to take. So as we begin passing the microphone around, as uh, the usual custom dictates, please identify yourself and your affiliation, please. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. First Speaker uh, Edgman, you mentioned that um, Representative Fanzler had been asked to turn in his keys and his staff had been reassigned. Are you not effectively expelling him without taking a vote to expel him? Well, you know, to ask a member to resign is a pretty serious step. And uh, uh, we uh, had credible information that came our way um, through uh, uh, some relationships that uh, of individuals here in the Capitol building to the, the victim. Um, so we were able to get a sense of uh, what, had, uh, what had taken place and certainly what was uh, reported uh, by the local newspaper here in Juneau. And um, you know, as I stated earlier, uh, Representative Fanzler has uh, constitutional rights and he's not been criminally charged yet. And uh, to ask for his resignation, again, it's, it's, it's a bold step. Um, and uh, it's uh, something that we acted uh, fairly definitively and very quickly on because, uh, quite frankly, our policy towards uh, inappropriate treatment and certainly violence towards anyone, much less uh, a woman, um, is something we just won't tolerate. So we've taken the steps that we can take at this point. Uh, we've not heard from Representative Fansler, but uh, it's my expectation that we likely will hear with within, um, I'm hoping, uh, sometime soon from Representative Fanzer, and then we'll, we'll go from there. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. On the evening that representative, the allegations against Representative Fanzler were published, I received a phone call from, or a message from two people who were with the victim on the, that evening, Saturday evening. They said they observed Representative Fanzler watching them as they walked to the victim's house. How are you taking steps to do anything to keep an eye on Representative Fansler or to protect the victims? Well, <clears throat> I, I'm not aware of those specifics. Let me just say that uh, uh, starting off, uh, Representative Fansler's conduct outside the Capitol building, I think, is, uh, is uh, certainly outside of our purview as a, a legislature. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's our, our hope, and, and you know, I, sh I probably should take a, a couple of minutes to, to say that, uh, that uh, you know, we've, as a, a, a coalition, we, uh, we took some pretty tough stances last year. We worked closely together, you know, as colleagues, you develop professional relationships, but you also develop personal relationships. And uh, Zach Fanzer was a hardworking legislator. And as a rural legislator myself, I know that he really put the time in and was very dedicated towards... Uh, uh, representing his district in the Bethel YK region to the best of his ability. Um, but at, at this point, uh, to reiterate uh, the criminal charges, as I understand it, at least as of Tuesday morning, uh, police report, none of that uh, has uh, come forward. 
And, um, and uh, you know, it, it's my hope that going forward, Representative Fanzler gets the treatment that uh, I think that he deserves and uh, that he's able to uh, sort of redirect uh, his life going forward. And, uh, and again, his conduct outside the Capitol building, um, you know, our, our work is inside the Capitol building. And, uh, uh, you know, I think it's his responsibility. Yeah, hi, Rich Maurer, Channel 2 News. Um, so, uh, Mr. Speaker, you said uh, there's been no police charge yet. You use the word yet. Does that mean you anticipate there being charges? <clears throat> well, I think the information that has come forward would indicate that, uh, that uh, there probably would be charges. But to sit here and to tell you definitively that there, there are going to be charges, uh, I think would be getting way ahead of things. Uh, but uh, if you ask me for my, my own personal assessment, I would say that there probably would be charges. Thanks. And, and a follow-up question. Um, did anyone in the caucus last night discuss expulsion? And what would it take to get to ex expulsion? <clears throat> well, you know, a moment ago I was talking about um, sort of the, the shock and the, the sadness and the, uh, you know, the emotional reaction uh, when something like this happens to one of our colleagues. Um, and we talked a lot about that last night. You know, we, we talked about uh, uh, the good work we've all done together. We talked about uh, Representative Fanzler's future. We also, um, I think it's fair to say, we paid homage to the victim and her bravery and courage in coming forward and how as a caucus we're not going to tolerate the, uh, this type of behavior. And uh, you know, future steps that uh, may be in the offing, um, I think are to be determined. And um, so at this point, we're waiting to hear from Representative Fanzer. We hope we hear from him in, in some uh, soon order. And uh, at that point, we will act accordingly. Shauna Crondall, Alaska Education Update. Uh, yesterday in the Senate Majority Press Conference, there were five senators participating. And when I asked them, uh, you know, how amenable they were to um, for early funding education, the only one who addressed it was Senator Hoffman, and he didn't sound, he, he didn't sound very open to it. He, he sounded kind of hesitant, and nobody else even addressed it. You guys actually think it has a chance of passing the Senate or, I mean, any solid feeling about that? Well, as, as I said, you know, this whole uh, idea developed with um, vice chair of the Senate Finance Committee uh, in the meeting there, as well as the whip of the um, uh, House minority. So uh, it's, obviously on everybody's radar that we need this and it's obviously that uh, the Senate is considering it um, very strongly with uh, SB um, 131, Senator Stevens' bill, because uh, that does kind of the same thing but for future legislatures. In other words, that doesn't impact what we're doing now. So this is the way to accomplish it for this year, to go forward with an early appropriation bill uh, and then Senator Stevens' legislation would establish that for future legislatures. And neither one of those things is incongruous with the other. Uh, but, you know, just passing a bill to say in the future we should do something, I, I think, and the House thinks, uh, House majority thinks, and I think the House minority thinks that we should accomplish it this year. Are there details that we'll be looking at? Um, sure. Uh, you know, the... In that Senate um, uh, press availability, they said one thing they feared was ad hoc draws from the earning reserve. The only other account that we could go to other than the CBR for early funding would be the earnings reserve because it's a fund that has enough money in there that you could pass a budget bill and direct where that money would come from. But that would be an ad hoc draw from the earnings reserve. It wouldn't be a structured draw. And so um, if there's, you know, that would be the only debate. Uh, I would like to say that, you know, normally um, appropriation bills are committee bills. But we wanted to put this forward as a bill in which people could um, state their really support for early funding of education so they could co-sponsor the bill. 
Um, I'm hoping that the House majority, uh, minority and many of those individuals will want to co-sponsor this bill uh, because I think everybody is agreeing that at least education levels where they were last year should be maintained. Uh, my understanding is that the Senate is not going to be proposing cuts to basic K-12 education. So leaving it till the end uh, just, you know, creates turmoil within the education and the municipalities because that's where that funding has to come from, and I think we should eliminate that. It's also costly. When you lose teachers and you have the recruiting process and the retraining process and all that, that's very costly for every district across the state. So this is one of those things that will promote efficiency in education by retaining the teachers and that training that, that we already have. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, Speaker Edgman, you said at the beginning that it may take Representative Fanzler some time to make a decision. Um, what are your thoughts on how that could affect um, the House doing its work as far as it being a potentially being a distraction? Well, I think that's a that's a fair question. Um, you know, I've worked closely with Representative Fanzler, um, uh, given that uh, we've had neighboring House districts, and our commonalities have ranged everything from power cost equalization to Village Public Safety Officer Program, schools, econ economic opportunity for small communities, and so forth. So I, I know uh, uh, Zach well, and uh, and uh, I, I truly wish him the best. And uh, knowing him as I do, I, I think he's going to make a decision that uh, will certainly be best for him. But I think he's also keeping the caucus in mind. And so it's my hope that um, that uh, his decision will come sooner than later. Like I mentioned at the outset, we're uh, preparing to swear in uh, soon to be Representative Lincoln from Kotzebue uh, tomorrow. Um, I think everyone knows that the, the gap between the majority and the minority in the House was narrow to begin with. Um, and uh, it will be narrow uh, going forward. But, you know, I'm our, our caucus, uh, I, I'm, you know, and I, I mean this generally, I'm very proud of our ability to stick together and to uh, work together as a tight unit, and uh, we're no strangers to adversity. We uh, uh, met the, the challenge uh, head-on last year on many occasions, um, and as you all know, through uh, uh, prolonged special sessions and the like. So I think that, uh, you know, distractions um, are a part of this business. Uh, they come, they go, but the committees, uh, if you look at the committee schedule, are very active. Um, and we have a lot of things going on as they normally would be going on. And so our eye is still very much on the ball going forward. Uh, Steve Quinn with KTVA. W what's next for you folks? Do you just wait or do you have another uh, caucus meeting tonight to discuss things further? What's on, what, what's your timeline? And this is... Well, in regard with Representative Fanster. Well, I, I would say it's a day-to-day -day situation for sure. And uh, we don't know if we would have a caucus again tonight, but we may. Um, this is, uh, you know, an important matter for certainly not only our caucus, but for the legislature as an institution in terms of how this is addressed going forward. So um, I keep going back to the uh, fact that it really is at this point a day-to-day -day matter given that uh, things sort of broke on Saturday and here we are a short uh, three days later. For Representative Seaton. In a world where the legislature passes some version of SB 26 and passes this, there would still be some deficit at the end of the year. How would that deficit be filled? Well, if this passes, um, even with the lower draw that has now been adopted as a sustainable draw, the 6.5% by the uh, permanent fund, um, we would be able to pass the budget and it would um, fully fund the budget. So, so we have enough with, um, if we pay for education and we have a uh, draw at 6.5%, not, you know, reduced that, basically 4.5%, we would, we would be able to fu fully fund the budget and we would not have a deficit. And then the year after that, though, it's anyone's guess? Well, yes, and, and the problem is that we don't have a long-term fiscal plan. And I'm, I, I was, um, shall I say, amused that in the Senate press conference it was said that 
they were finally addressing diversifying our revenue by taking the money from another savings account. You know, that's not what we consider diversifying our revenue. We're looking at new sources of revenue or increased. In, and we've said, you know, uh, SB 26, um, those pieces of the um, uh, spending cap, those kind of things are all, you know, um, peripheral to getting a uh, broad-based tax of some kind. We didn't even in SB 26 say it had to be the tax that we had proposed, just needed to be a broad-based tax, getting about $650 million and some uh, additional revenue from oil taxes. And if we can get those two things, we have a sustainable budget going forward. But those two are components that need to go forward. And if we wait and we don't do anything on other revenue, then what happens is if we have a slight downturn or anything, the only place to go to is reducing the permanent fund dividend more, and that is not something that we want to have as the only thing um, going to be available. We need to start now for a long-term strategy of diversified income for the state of Alaska. Speaker Edgman, um, you mentioned having worked uh, quite closely with Representative Fansler and um, having a good personal or personal and professional relationship with him. In the time you spent with him, did you ever um, notice any anything uh, with his behavior or anything that was out of the ordinary, or was it just um, like working with any of your other colleagues? Yeah, another good question. I would say certainly not to the extent of what uh, apparently took place here recently. Um, and I, I did some, most of my time with Representative Fansler was uh, in the Capitol working on a lot of issues. Uh, we uh, share the same senator. And so again, a lot of sort of joint uh, projects and working efforts. Uh, but I would answer it by saying that uh, no. And um, I think that goes for a lot of other people, hence sort of the, the shock and and the sadness and um, and uh, the, the processing of the information, all sort of, you know, alongside the fact that we had to take a definitive step, we did, and um, we're not going to tolerate uh, bad behavior of any sort. And with that, uh, thank you all for being here this morning. We'll see you next week uh, at 9 a.m. this time, and uh, see you then. <laughs>